All right, good morning, Way Academy. Um, we are using a new version of the Hate You Give. As you know, in this world of online learning, everything continues to change and access to resources changes at the drop of a hat as well. Um, so we are using a new service. And hopefully, uh, this is a little easier for you to read and we'll be able to get right back on track. Uh, I also think this will allow me to read a little longer for you. So hopefully it's a good news item all around. Um, if you will recall, we were on at almost at the end of chapter 13 in our reading from earlier in the week. Um, and it was nice to see some of you attempt to do the Kahoot quiz. If you missed getting that, make sure to check your dear message for Wednesday. Um, yesterday, we took a look at um, the Kahoot review challenge for what we've read so far. Um, so if you haven't done that, go ahead and make sure to do that. Um, but for those of you who are ready, if you have your book at home, if you're lucky enough, you're on page 233. If you're following along with us, we're only, uh, I think it says 104. Um, so the page numberings are all different. But some of the key events, you'll remember uh, recently Mr. Lewis spoke up to the media. And as a result, he ended up, uh, as they say, snitches get stitches. So unfortunately, he lived that mantra and uh, paid the price. We saw that his face was swollen, the eyes swollen shut and the cheek slashed. Uh, the King Lords attacked him. And ironically, this occurred when Lisa and Maverick took Star and Devante over to Uncle Carlos, um, and where they discovered he is now on leave from the police station. So there's a whole lot of activity going on. Maver or pardon me, again, Mr. Lewis was hurt. Maverick came to the defense and basically, um, you know, try to talk some sense into Devante. What are you doing? Why didn't you just protect him? So uh, they still have some growth to do. And as we know, they went to over to Uncle Carlos's house. Uh, it's interesting that Uncle Carlos is on leave for being related to who is believed to be the star witness. Again, star um, has not spoken to the media. She's only spoken to justice for just us, but that's about to change. Um, what's something else I can tell you? Um, just looking at my notes. Upon arrival, Star surprised to see Carlos. So again, they were surprised. Uh, Carlos was talking about his distrust with black communities and the police, um, how that's sort of overriding into his own beliefs as well. So it's really difficult as a black cop, um, when he's been put on leave, meanwhile, he was just trying to do his job as well. So the theme of race and injustice continues. Um, I think that's about it in terms of the most interesting parts for you. Let's just get on with the reading. Um, looking at the top of the page, you'll see, oh, really? And if you think back to one of the final pivotal moments from our reading, Maverick made an important discovery. He discovered something about Star. Do you guys remember what he discovered? That's right. He discovered that his daughter is dating a white boy, and Chris is his name, as we know. Uh, for those of you who've uh, taken the time to watch our um, the beginning of the Hate You Give movie, you may recognize the role of Chris is played by the actor who played Archie in Riverdale. So I thought that was interesting as I was watching it. But let's see what's happening next with our characters as they continue to find their voice. So um, again. Maverick was upset and uh, there was this sort of awkward transition as Maverick left in a huff and Chris gives him a bit of a smile and says, this is awkward. My cheeks are hot and I'm glad I'm too brown for it to show. Yeah, awkward. He takes my hand and taps his fingertips against my fingertips one at a time. He laces his fingers through mine and we let our arms swing together in the space between us. Daddy comes in and slams the door behind him. He zeroes straight in on our joined hands. Chris doesn't let go. Point for my boyfriend. We'll talk later, Star, and Daddy marches out. So that's where he marches out. If this were a rom-com, Kiss says, if this were a rom-com, so a romantic comedy movie, you'd be Zoe Saldana and I'd be Ashton Kutcher. Huh? He sips his juice. This old movie. Guess who? I caught it when I had the flu a few weeks ago. Zoe Saldana dated Ashton Kutcher. Her dad didn't like that she was dating a white guy. That's us. Except... This isn't funny, I say. It can be. Nah, what's funny, though, is that you watched a rom-com. Hey, he cries. It was hilarious. More of a comedy than a rom-com. Bernie Mac was her dad. 
That guy's hilarious, one of the kings of comedy. I don't think it can be called a rom-com simply because he was in it. Okay, you get points for knowing who Bernie Mac is and that he was the king of comedy. Everyone should know that. True, but you don't get a pass. It was still a rom-com. I won't tell anyone though. I lean over to kiss his cheek, but he moves his head. I'm gonna try and scroll here for you guys to get that to the top. There we go. I lean over to kiss his cheek, but he moves his head, giving me no choice but to kiss him on the mouth. Soon we're making out, right there in my uncle's kitchen. Ahem, <clears throat> somebody clears their throat. Chris and I separate so fast. I thought embarrassment was having my boyfriend hear my parents argue. Nope, embarrassment is having my mom walk in on me and Chris making out, again. Don't you all think you should let each other breathe, she says. Chris blushes, down to his Adam's apple. I should go. He leaves with a quick goodbye to Mama. She raises her eyebrows at me. Are you taking your birth control pills? Mommy, answer my question. Are you? Yes, I groan, putting my face in the countertop. When was your last cycle? Oh, my Lord. I lift my head and flash the fakest of fake smiles. We're fine. Promise. Y'all got some nerve. Your daddy was so barely out of the driveway and y'all slobbering all over each other. You know how Maverick is. Are you? Are we staying out here tonight? The question catches her off guard. Why would you think that? Oh, uh, because you and daddy had a disagreement. That's all. A disagreement the whole neighborhood heard. Plus, one the other night? Star, we're okay. Don't worry about it. Your father's being... Mm, your father. Outside, somebody honks. Uh, somebody honks his car. Bleh. Let's try that again. Somebody honks his car horn a bunch of times. Mama rolls her eyes. Speaking of your father, I guess Mister. I'm gonna slam doors. Needs me to move my car so he can leave. She shakes her head and heads toward the front. I throw Chris's juice away and search the cabinets. Aunt Pam may be picky when it comes to drinks, but she always buys good snacks. And my stomach's my stomach is talking. I get some graham crackers and slather peanut butter on them. So good. Devante comes in the kitchen. Can't believe you're dating a white boy. He sits next to me and steals a graham cracker sandwich. And a wigger at that. Um, I'm realizing that we read this a little bit the other day. So uh, this will be a little bit more of a recap than I anticipated. But again, finding new versions of the text has made it difficult. Excuse you, I say with a mouthful of peanut butter. He's not a wigger. Please, dude wearing J's. White boys wear Converse and Vans, not J's, unless they're trying to be black. Really? My bad. I didn't know shoes determine somebody's race. He can't say anything to that. Like I thought, what do you see in him anyway? For real? All them dudes in Garden Heights? Who would get with you in a second? And you, looking at Justin Bieber. Again, making fun of Chris for the fact that he's Caucasian. I point in his face. Don't call him that. And what dudes? Nobody in Garden Heights is checking for me. Hardly anybody knows my name. Hey, even called me Big Mav's daughter, who worked, uh, even you called me Big Mav's daughter, who worked in the store. Because you don't come around, he says. I ain't never seen you at a party. Nothing. Without thinking, I say, you mean parties where people get shot at? And as soon as it leaves my mouth, I feel like crap. Oh my God, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have said that. He stares at the countertop. It's cool. Don't worry about it. Remember, both have had uh, loved ones shot recently. We quietly nibble on graham crackers. Uh, I say, the silence is brutal. Uncle Carlos and Aunt Pam are cool. I think you'll like it here. He bites another graham cracker. They can be corny sometimes, but they're sweet. They'll look out for you. Knowing Aunt Pam, she'll treat you like Ava and Daniel. Uncle Carlos will probably be tougher. If you follow the rules, you'll be okay. Khalil talked about you sometimes, Devante says. Huh? You said n you said nobody knows you, but Khalil talked about you. I ain't know you as Big Mav's daughter, who I ain't know that was you, he says. But he talked about his friend Star. He said you were the coolest girl he knew. Some peanut butter gets stuck in my throat, but it's not the only reason I swallow. I'm trying to get rid of tears, as you can predict. How did you know? Oh, yeah. Both of y'all were king lords. Again, remember, rival gangs. I swear to God, wherever I think about, whenever I think about Khalil f falling into that life, it's like watching him die all over again. Yeah, Khalil matters and not the stuff he did, but I can lie. I can't lie and say it doesn't bother me or it's not disappointing. He knew better. Devante says, Khalil wasn't a King Lord star, but at the funeral, King put the bandana on him 
To save face, Devante says. He tried to get Khalil to join, and but Khalil said, nah. Then a cop killed him. So, you know, all the homies riding for him now. King not about to admit that Khalil turned him down. So he got folks thinking that Khalil repped King Lords. Wait, I say. How do you know he turned King down? Khalil told me in the park one day. We was posted up. So you all sold drugs together? Yeah, for King. Oh. He didn't want to sell drug star, Devante says. Nobody really want to do that. Khalil ain't have much of a choice, though. Yeah, he did, I say thickly. No, he didn't. Look, his mama stole some stuff from King. King wanted her dead. Khalil found out and started selling to pay the debt. What? Yeah, that's the only reason he started doing that stuff, trying to save her. I can't believe it. Then again, I can. That was classic Khalil. No matter what his mama did, he was still her knight, and he was still going to protect her. This is worse than denying him, I thought, the worst of him, like everybody else. I was his best friend, and I thought the worst of him. You can only imagine what's going through her mind. Don't be mad at him, Devante says, and it's funny, because I can hear Khalil asking me not to be mad, too. I'm not, I sigh. Okay, I was a little mad. I just hate how he's being called a thug when people don't know the whole story. You said it. He wasn't a gangbanger. And if everybody knew why he sold drugs, then they wouldn't think he was a thug like me? Mm, I didn't mean... It's cool, he says. I get it, because I guess I am a thug. I don't know. I did what I had to do. King Lords was the closest thing me and Dalvin had to a family. But your mama, I say, and your sisters? They couldn't look out for us like King Lords do, he says. Me and Dalvin looked out for them. With King Lords, we had a whole bunch of folks who had our backs, no matter what. They bought us clothes our mama couldn't afford and always made sure we ate. He all, he looks at the counter. It was just cool to have somebody take care of us for a change instead of the other way around. Oh, and as you see, a crappy response as she knows. Like I said, nobody likes selling drugs, he says. I hated that stuff, for real. But I hated seeing my mama and my sisters go hungry, you know? I don't know. I've never had to know. My parents made sure of that. You go, you got... You got it good then, he says. I'm sorry they talking about Khalil like that, though. He really was a good dude. Hopefully one day they can find out the truth. Yeah, I say quietly. Devante, Khalil, neither one of them thought they had much of a choice. If I were them, I'm not sure I'd make a much of a better one. I'd not, eh. If I were them, I'm not sure I'd make a much better one. Guess that makes me a thug too. I'm going for a walk, I say, getting up. My head's all over the place. You can have the rest of the graham crackers and peanut butter. I leave. I don't know where I'm going because I don't know much of anything anymore. You see, we're moving on to chapter 14. I'm going to go ahead and pause there and test out our new software uh, and see how our recorder's doing. And we'll be back for another session here shortly.